Hey there, thank you so much for tuning in to Mission Church. We hope that this message helps you in your journey in finding and following Christ. We're currently in a series called Who is Jesus that is going to lead us to Easter weekend. And we would absolutely love to see you here to celebrate Easter with us. Check out wearemission.com slash Easter for all of those details. But for today, let's dive into this message. When you think of bread, what comes to mind? When you think of bread, what comes to mind? And I know, I know this is a touchy subject. This is touchy. Some of you gave up bread for Lent, and you're like, I, I'm not ready to even talk about it. When you give up bread, what comes to mind? Some of you, it's a bread bowl at Panera. You're like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, as others of you, you're more of an Olive Garden person. The unlimited breadsticks. Yeah, anyone? No? Panera, yes. Olive Garden, no. Or 9 a.m., you're just like, I'm exhausted. I'm not, gonna inter- I'm not at all going to interact with you today. All right. Uh, sourdough. Any big sourdough fans? Yeah, okay. We got- oh, all right. Wow. Rye. How about rye? How's- is-, is rye even a rye? Okay, rye is still a thing. Yeah, so, uh, gluten-free. Okay, yeah. Some of you are like, yes! All right, I, I kind of live in a gluten-free uh, world myself. How about this? Focaccia? Uh, was there-, there was almost an audible amen right there in the fourth <laughs> in the fourth. Row. Uh, when you think of bread, some of you, you go back to a place. You think of your grandma's house and that smell in her house in that fresh bread. That, that's where some of you guys um, go. Some of you, you think about Jersey Mike's or you think about Jimmy John's. Um, when I think about bread, I think about a lot of different things, but I think about Jimmy John's. In fact, I worked at Jimmy John's in college. And this was really good news for my college roommates. Uh, they knew when I was working, they would place their order, and literally in my red pickup truck at Illinois State, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even hit the brakes. They'd, my, my roommates would be out on the corner, and I would just like 30 miles an hour just be launching Jimmy John sandwiches out the window of my truck. So when I think about bread, I'd go back to my time at Illinois State when we would make our fresh bread. As you know, Jimmy John's free smells, and it's true. I want you to think about bread today, but more than that, here's my hope is that every single time from this point on, when you think about bread, when you smell bread, and when you eat bread, that you would remember this moment today when you and I opened up the word of God and we studied these unbelievably important words of Jesus when Jesus said, listen, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. This is what we're talking about today. Seven I am statements are what we're focusing on Leading up to Easter, last week was the light of the world. This week, when Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Say that with me. I am the bread of life. This is what we're studying today. This is one of the seven I am statements. And he said this right on the heels of an incredible miracle that he did with bread. Uh, If you want to open up your Bible, you can to John chapter 6. That's where we'll be uh, camping out today, John chapter 6. Jesus said this statement I am the bread of life. It was the first of the seven statements. And he said this right after he did this incredible miracle with bread. And so his audience on their mind was bread because of what Jesus just did. Uh, The miracle was uh, titled The Feeding of the 5,000. Have you guys ever heard of this before? The Feeding of the 5,000. If you've been watching The Chosen, they spent an episode on that. The Feeding of the 5,000, there was a a group of hungry people, 5,000 heads of family. So it was probably around 15 to 20,000 people in total. And Jesus moved from this place of compassion. He wanted to feed hungry people. Maybe you heard this story before. If not, you should read it. It's amazing what Jesus did. A a boy brought his Lunchable that day to Jesus. And he he took a couple fish and, and he took some bread, barley bread, which was the bread of the poor back in the day of Jesus. It was the bread no one wanted. And I just think there's something to that. And he took this bread and he took this fish And he did what only God could do. He multiplied it to the degree that it fed everyone there. So bread was on their mind. And they follow Jesus around and they find him again and they want him to do another powerful miracle because they like signs and wonders, as do you and I. And even with the feeding of the 5,000, they completely missed the point. They thought it was just about his power and what he could do. And it was that, but it was more than that. The feeding of the 5,000 was a sign. It was meant to get their attention. It wasn't just about power, but it was a sign of what life under 
the rule and reign of King Jesus would include. And so this is why he feeds the 5,000. It was a window into understanding what Jesus was ushering in, that in my kingdom, when you choose to live your life under my rule and reign, the hungry will be satisfied. And so he fed them. And so they followed him because they wanted him to do some more miracles. And in that moment, in that context, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Uh, growing up, there was a commercial that was really popular. Uh, the, the statement was on billboards. It was all over the place. They got pro athletes to get on board with it. Show of hands, how many of you guys remember the Got Milk campaign? Yeah, it was, it was a really successful ad campaign, and so so many people started drinking really unhealthy milk. Um, we were that generation. We grew up on it. That and Captain Crunch. And uh, we wonder why we were always tired at school. Uh, but Gat Milk was this huge thing, super popular. Uh, but what Jesus is doing in this moment in John chapter 6, he's launching his campaign. And really, you could just say it was Got Bread. That's his campaign. He's saying, do you have this bread? Got Bread. Say that with me. Got, Got Bread. This is what he's asking, and this is what he's asking today. Do you Got Bread. And he's not talking about multigrain. He's not talking about gluten-free. No, he's talking about himself. Do you have that which will satisfy you today, but also for eternity? Got bread. He was asking then. He's asking now. If you're in John chapter 6, we're going to look at verse 35. This will be where we spend our time today. John 6, verse 35. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He says, whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Spending time in just this one verse this past week, I want to draw your attention to two really important things from this one verse. If you're taking notes, this is the first thing to write down, a promise made. When we pull out truth from what I just read, there's two really important things you and I cannot miss. Here's the first, a promise made. Jesus in this moment, who is our promise keeper, makes an incredible promise in this statement. What promise is it? Here it is. Never go hungry. Say that with me. Never go hungry. Write that down. Type that into your notes app. Bold it. This is a promise. Um, This is a promise that our promise keeper makes in this moment. Whoever comes to me, here's the good news, We'll never go hungry. Now, here's what I know. 9 a.m., there's a lot of differences in this room. Some of you already got your workout in this morning. Others of you, you're like, nope, haven't even thought about it. Uh, There's a lot of differences in this room. But here's the one thing we all have in common. We're hungry. Show of hands, how many of you uh, have been around infants before? Maybe you've birthed one. Maybe, yeah, uh, you're raising one. Um, Did you notice that you didn't have to teach them how to be hungry? immediately, they're crying. Why? They're hungry. And here's what I know, in a room this size, but the truth is in every room and in any room, in churches all around the world right now, every single preacher is preaching to a room full of hungry people. You're hungry, as am I. It's human to be hungry. Here's how hunger is defined, a strong craving or desire. And I think you're already picking up that I'm not just talking about hunger as in, is it lunchtime yet hunger? No, we are human beings. We were actually created to crave. We're hungry people. And we're hungering for all different kinds of things. Many in this room, what you're hungry for is promotion or relationship. Um, Some recognition. That's what you're hungry for. You feel unseen. You feel unseen by others. You feel unseen by family. You feel unseen by the organization that you work in, and you're hungering for that. You're, you're craving. You're wondering, does anyone even notice what I do around here? Others, you're hungering for retirement. I thought there'd be an amen right there. <laughs> um, a lot of us were hungering for vacation to Florida or Arizona. Come on, 9 a.m., Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going in two weeks. Judge me if you want. I don't care. 
I, I rented the minivan. We're loading it up, and we're out of here. We'll be back, though. We'll be back after a few days. But, man, I'm hungering for sunshine. I'm going to keep moving because that will make me emotional. <laughs> Some of you are craving margin. You're just running from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. Some of you are hungering uh, for financial margin. You can't remember the last time you didn't wake up or thinking about financial stress. It's tough. Things have been hard. Things are hard. This is what you're hungering for. Many of you, you've shared with me, you're hungering for peace within your family. Christmas was tough, <clears throat> but Easter's coming, and you're hosting. You're already thinking about the seating assignments. You're like, how much distance can we create from Uncle Joe? And, right, I mean, this is, this is your reality. <laughs> so you're like, how did you know that was his name? No, I just threw it out there. I don't know. I don't know your Uncle Joe. <laughs> but isn't this true? We're hungry. We're craving. A Snickers commercial I thought was brilliant. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this campaign that they were doing. I got a picture, uh, I believe, of it. Um, the, the title of their campaign was, You're Not You When You're Hungry. Do you guys remember this? And that's very true. Just ask my wife or my daughters. Like, when I am not me and I'm not in a good place, like, I'm a very simple person. All they need to do is hand me something to eat. They're just like, she's like, Dad's Okay. Okay, he's just hungry, and they're like, no, I think he's hangry, and it's true. It's true, this, this is me. And I love that statement because it's true. It's true physically, but it's true in every domain of our life. You're not you when you're hungry. And Jesus is saying in John chapter 6, I know. That's why I'm here. Got bread? What kind of bread are you filling your soul with? He says this in verse 27, do not work for food that spoils. Man, we're good at that. We're good at craving, chasing, hustling, working for that which never satisfies. He says, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that what? Say it with me, food that, yeah, food that endures, food that lasts, lasts to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Jesus is saying, I came to give you this kind of nourishment. I will give you. He's making a significant promise in this moment. Will give you. This is a promise. And some of you are wondering, can I trust this promise? I would like to tell you from my experience and from my story, the answer is yes. Yet I know in a room like this, you're like, I don't know. I don't know if I can trust this promise. Some of you are like the stones. You can't get no. Say, yeah, okay. I'm like, do they not know the song? And you try, and you try, and you try. But have you really tried this bread? Not the bread of earth, but the bread of heaven, who is Jesus, who came to fill your craving soul with himself. Can we trust it? I believe we can as does the word of God. Psalm 107 verse nine says, I got a bunch of uh, verses here if you wanna screenshot these and come back to them in your own time. God's word says, for he satisfies. Someone needs to hear this. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry. Psalm 22, the afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. Psalm 145, 13, the Lord is trustworthy in all his promises and faithful in all he does. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. Check this out. You open your hand and what? And satisfy. This is who God is. He is the satisfier of the hunger pains within your soul satisfies the desires of every living thing. And you are alive, from what I can tell. This is what God's word says. How about 2 Corinthians 1.20? For all God's promises, not some, all, have been, past tense, have been, therefore, right now, will be, 
All God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ. Say that with me. In Christ. With a resounding yes. So we can trust John 6. That the food Jesus is bringing and brought in that moment was himself. That kind of food endures to eternal life. G.K. Chesterton once said this. I love this quote. Write this one down. Come back to it. Because many when I preach a sermon like this, we'll say, but I've tried. And I say back to them, have you ever read this quote from G.K.? It's money. The Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and left untried. Can we just agree that it's difficult to say no to the food that this world puts in front of our face to choose the bread of heaven that actually satisfies Can we just agree that that's difficult? Can we agree that every single moment, every single day, messages are coming into our mind, the more you scroll, the more you just open your eyes, the food of this earth, the food of this world, add in what Satan's trying to do, add in what your flesh wants to do, it is hard. It is difficult. And the bread of earth is put on a platter before you every single day in the form of career, in the form of accolades, in the form of whatever. And everything within us, this gravitational pull is to go after that food. It's hard to go after this food. But I'm telling you, and God's word is telling you, and Jesus himself is promising you. When you go after this food that is me, Jesus is saying, you'll be satisfied. You will. That which you are craving will be met. I got into triathlons, what, two years, yeah, two years ago, two and a half years ago. So everyone kind of had their like pandemic project. Well, I can't build anything. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do? And um, I'd had a fear of swimming my whole life, fear of the water because, you know, long story. But so I'm like, this is my, this is my project. I'm going to learn how to swim. And so long story made short, I think, we'll see, is uh, I started swimming, and then this kind of just kick-started this whole triathlon thing. So I got into triathlons, and I've been really into triathlons now for, I guess, two, two years or so. And so did a number of these Olympic distances, and then this September, I, I went after my first uh, half Ironman, 70.3 is what it's called. And I say that because some of you, it's been a bucket list for you to, to do a full Ironman or a half Ironman. Come talk to me about it. I want you to do it with me. And we're going to raise a lot of money for a really important cause, all right? You can talk to me after church about it. Um, but anyway, so what I learned this September doing my first half Ironman, it's, it's a long time, all right? My goal was to do it in six hours, and I didn't quite make the goal. And here's why. Um, the swim went pretty well, 43 minutes. I'm not that fast, but I got it done. Got on the bike, and guys, something got into me. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. I, was pa- I passed like 100 people, and, I, and it just brought me great joy to pass them on the bike. <laughs> but this was, this was my first like cycling this long in that kind of race, and I made a critical mistake. I felt so good on the bike that I didn't think to eat on the bike. And if any of you have done Ironmans like this, you know the most important thing on the bike is you're supposed to eat the whole time. But truthfully, I wasn't that hungry. I was having a blast. I'm waving to people as I pass them. I'm just having a great time. And so I get off of the bike, and I put in a great time on the bike. I'm like, I'm going to crush my six-hour goal. And then I start the run. And it's a 13.1-mile run. And things were great for about 100 yards. (laughs) And it hits me. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Um, the The way I describe it is the lights started to go out. Things got dark. Tunnel vision started to go in, and I've done enough of these races, I knew exactly what was happening, and I realized, you idiot, you didn't eat on the bike. You, you, were, you were on that bike for almost three hours, and you didn't eat anything. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take in a ton of sodium and a lot of calories and even more water, and I didn't do that, and so what happened on the run is the lights went out. Now, I continued to go on. I was walking. I was running. I was just trying to make it. I was grabbing pretzels. I needed sodium, and so this was my learning is you have to take in the right stuff. And some of you right now, like the lights have gone out in your life. And you're saying, I'm just gonna walk away from this Christianity thing. I've tried it. I'm saying to you what I learned in September, I think it's a diet thing. 
I think it's a nourishment thing. I think it's what you're choosing to not put in your body because maybe you're feeling a little bit of tailwind, baby, and things are going good and you're passing people and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness. I don't think I can go one more step and I'm telling you, no, you can. When you come to Jesus, who is the bread of life, and you feast on him, yet you've become so casual about that kind of soul diet. You've actually become, can I say, lazy about that kind of soul diet. You're just gorging on Sunday with this 30-minute sermon, but you know that isn't enough. He's saying, "Um, got bread? This is why I came. Feast on me. And when you do, you'll see. You'll see that I am not only the promise maker, I'm the promise keeper. You will be fulfilled. John 6, verse 50, Jesus goes on to say, but here is the bread, speaking of himself, that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. Show of hands, how many of you would like to not die? Yeah, most of us, most of us. Some of you are like, no, I'm done. I'm ready to go. (laughs) So back to our verse, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me, will never go hungry. Two things going on. A promise. Secondly, an invitation. An invitation. If you're taking notes, this is the second truth I want to pull from this verse. An invitation extended. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life, and then he says, whoever. Don't miss this part. Whoever. Whoever. Say that with me. Whoever. 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 Anyone, everyone, whoever, whoever comes to me, they'll never go hungry. What an invitation. What an invitation to every single person in this room. There's a bakery in Carroll Stream just down the road called Sours Bakery. You guys ever been to Sours before? Yeah, it's amazing, and it's a really great spot. They, in the fall, have... And this, this does make me a little emotional. Um, apple cider donuts that are, and I've, I've been on a mission to find the best apple cider donuts, and I'd, I would give them the nod on this one. I don't want to say I'm an expert, but I'm pretty close to um, an expert on apple cider donuts. So Sour's Bakery, amazing. They're so amazing that everyone kind of knows about it, and so here's what continued to happen to me this past fall. I would get there, and I would walk up to the counter, and they know why I was there, and they would give me this look. And it was this look of sadness um, towards me. They would just kind of do like this. And I, and I knew what they meant, which is I got there too late. Like, we're just so sorry. You know, we're already sold out. Um, like last Saturday when I was here. And, and so, yeah, so that, that's what they would, they would say to me. You just need to come back earlier. And some of you, this has been your experience. Not with apple cider donuts. But you wanted to be wanted and you felt rejected. You wanted to be welcomed by him or by her or by them, and you felt pushed away. And for the person that feels that or has felt that and is wondering, man, what would Jesus do if I moved towards him? Jesus is saying, whoever. There's no shortage in this bakery. I am the bread of life. And I just showed you how multiplying I can do things. There's no shortage with me. Whoever, wherever, whenever, whoever comes to me. He says this in verse 40. He keeps echoing this. For my Father's will is that everyone, everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him will have eternal life. He says it again in verse 48. I am the bread of life. Here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone, say that with me, Anyone may eat and not die. Again, verse 51, if anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. What an invitation. This past weekend, I was in Texas uh, speaking at a men's conference and then at a church called Stonewater outside of Fort Worth. And it was an incredible uh, experience. So thankful for the opportunity, truly. One of my favorite things, and I don't get to do it a ton, but is to see the bride of Christ 
the church in different places of the world, in different places um, of our country. It's such an incredible thing. And so it's a lot of cowboys in that church, and just every car pretty much is a pickup truck. And, and I had a, they rented me a Camry. <laughs> and I'm like, is there, a, is there another parking lot I can park this? Because I have a sedan that's foreign. This isn't going to go well in Texas. Um, so God really showed up this past weekend, and I got to preach and just talk about Jesus and what he's done in my life and what he's continuing to do in my life. And I, I gave these guys, there's about 800 guys in, in the room, an opportunity to, to respond to this invitation like I'm giving you right now, and a number of guys did. And uh, the next day, I was getting ready to preach again, and this guy stopped me in the parking lot, and he's like, I got to talk to you, man. He's like, last night, I was one of the guys, and he's like, listen, man, I, I, I've never been to church until just a few months ago. I'm like, well, I thought everyone in Texas went to church. He's like, no. Like, growing up, my dad said, you cannot go to church. It's where they're going to steal your money. It's a cult. It's a terrible thing. He's like, I never went to church. And then my 10-year-old uh, son started going to church and asked me to come with, and then I heard about man camp, and so I came to this thing, and I hear you preach. Yes, this was called man camp. And I heard, I heard you preach last night, and he's like, I responded. I gave my life to Jesus, and I just had to tell you. So I have a picture of this guy. This is Jeremy, and it's just amazing. This guy surrendered his life to Jesus. He's like, John, you got to understand, I might be the most unlikely guy in Texas to surrender his life to Jesus. He's like, I can't wait to get home tomorrow and tell my wife, and I'll see you at church on Sunday. And I got to meet his wife in that next day, and she's like, this is unbelievable. What did you do to my husband? I'm like, I didn't do anything. You can talk to him, you know. Whoever. Anyone. What an invitation. So what do we do today? How do we respond today? On the way in, you were given communion. And I just want you to hold this for just a minute. Just hold it in your hands. Just hold on to it. Don't go taking it yet. Hold on. This Wednesday night at the Alpha Course, uh, my wife Kelly and I were getting to lead a circle, and it's just, it's the coolest thing in the world. Um, got some friends that we love dearly that are exploring faith, and one of the things we talked about on Wednesday night is, is how I want to finish this sermon today. We talked about a verse in, at the very end of your Bible Revelation 3, verse 20. This incredible verse. It says this. Jesus is saying, here I am. There's another I am. I stand at the door and knock. This is what he's doing. If anyone, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, what do I want you to do today? I want you to open the door. Open the door. He says, anyone, anyone who hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. The bread of life has come to your house. There you are in the kitchen. You've opened the fridge and there's nothing to eat. You're looking through the cupboards and there's nothing there. And you stand alone in the kitchen that is your life, starving. Hunger pangs setting in. And in that moment, there's a knock at your door. You, you go up to the, to the front door and you, you pull down the blinds a little bit. You want to see who it is. Is it Amazon? Like, who, who is that? And you, 
listen, you pull down the blinds and you look out and you see him. The great I am. How do you know it's him? I don't know, but you do. He has set eternity in your heart and you know it's him. And you hear him knocking. And then you hear him speak because faith comes through hearing. You hear him say, open the door. Open the door. You want to open the door, but you're scared to open the door. What will he do if I let him in? Will he have an opinion on the wood flooring or the carpet or the paint colors I've chosen? Yeah, he will. Will he have an opinion how I run things in this house? Oh, yeah, 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 he will. And so you're scared. But something in your spirit is saying, but I think I need him to speak into those things. That maybe, just maybe, he is the expert of all time on anything and everything that would ever happen in this home that is your life. And your heart is racing and the knocking continues and the question is, will you open the door? And in faith and in desperation and in humility, And in logic, you open the door and you see him. And he comes in and he walks right up to your table and he sits down and you sit down and it dawns on you. You got nothing to feed him. And with a look, He says, no, 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 no. I brought the bread. It's me. Open the door. Let him in. Let him provide the meal. This isn't about your works of how good you're going to cook for him. No. This is about grace. You hold in your hand a wafer that represents the bread of life broken for you, the juice that represents the blood of God because he is God spilled for you. And Justin's going to play a song over you here in just a second. I want you To have a meal with Jesus. We're not in a hurry. If we pull down the lights, let him in. For some of you, this is the first time. Open the door. Jesus, come in. As you receive today the the bread and the juice, today is your day of salvation. You're going to open the door, like my friend Jeremy did last weekend. Others of us, we remember when we opened the door. But let's be honest, we've gotten so busy running circles around that table, rushing out the door, yet there he is, the bread of life, sitting at your table, and he says, hey, Let's commune. Let's eat together. And you've been eating the bread of this world. Have a seat. Whenever you're ready, as Justin plays and sings over you, you can peel off that top layer, eat the bread, then drink the juice. When he's done, our prayer team will be up front. Please receive prayer today. God, thank you that you came for hungry people. You've created us to crave. In 
Jesus, you are the solution for that soul craving that nothing in this world will ever satisfy. And you've come to our door right now. And you're knocking. And you tell us that if we would open that door, that you'll come in. You'll eat with us. But you don't kick down the door. No, this is a relationship. And so God, right now I'm praying that for that person that hears the knocking right now, that they in faith would open that door. That you'd come in. That they would eat. That they'd have eternal life. Bread, nourishment, forever. And for the rest of us that opened the door a long time ago or last week or whatever, that we would stop our striving and chasing of the bread of this earth, that we would sit down. And we'd have a meal with Jesus, who is the bread for our hungry soul. So now, God, we open wide our mouths and you will fill it. We love you. And we pray this in your name. Amen.
to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You guys will stand to your feet. Prayer team, if you'd come forward. We have a prayer team ready to pray with you every single weekend. You guys can come forward and get into place. Got bread? That's why he came. Hungry? Yeah, me too. He'll feed you. This week, what if we were to feast on the bread of life? Like, an inordinate amount of time we'd spend with Jesus. We'd prioritize his presence. We'd open up the word of God. Maybe it's through the Lent devotionals that we're doing every morning. Maybe it's a different reading plan. And you were to take in consistently Jesus, the one who satisfies the cravings, the hungers that our soul has. Let me pray. God, thank you so much for what you're doing. We thank you for your word. Jesus, thank you for thank you for this promise that you've made and this invitation that you've extended for anyone and everyone that you will come in if we open the door and you'll eat with us and you provide the bread. And so God, may we this week seek you and prioritize you and take in that which truly satisfies the soul. As folks come to receive prayer, thank you, God, for the ministry of prayer and what it does when we receive it. We thank you, God, for the work that you're doing. We pray for the 1030 and for the 12 today. Come, Holy Spirit. Do what only you can do. We love you. And all God's people agreed and said, amen. We'll see you guys next week. We are mission. Hey there, thank you so much for tuning in to this message. We hope and pray that this helps you in your journey in finding and following Christ. We hope to see you right here at 82 Stratford Drive on every single Sunday, but also would love to invite you to our Easter services. Check out wearemission.com Easter for all of those details, and we'll see you next time.